So today I've just been trying to work on the fridge and getting that fitted in here and one of the big things to do with this is to get the enclosure made for it. So this is where we're working with this uh, aluminium composite material. Uh, one of the brand names for this is Dibon, these aren't Dibon sheets but uh, it's used regularly with sign making and it's uh, an aluminium sandwich that uses Half mil of aluminium, two millimetres of, I think it's polyethylene, and then another half millimetre of aluminium. And it can be had in all sorts of different finishes, and you can also get it printed on, or vinyl, and then the vinyl is laminated on it to get you lots of nice patterns. I've been using a track saw and a um, router to shape it. It is possible that you can score it and break it using a Stanley knife and a straight edge, uh, but for me... Using these tools has been useful, especially with the fridge panels, which aren't just rectangles. So here you can see the three panels we've got so far that make up this enclosure. Oops, that one's not quite in yet. Um, I still need to drill the holes in these for the 3D printed mounts that are going on there. And then once these are in place, we can add the uh, PIR insulation which is mostly there to help with um, a bit of extra sound deadening, but it should also perhaps help with a bit of insulation around the fridge. It's effectively it doubles the amount of insulation with the fridge. Uh, as you can see here, the big gap at the bottom, that's important. That's so that the fridge can draw in cool air, draws it up the back, puts it through its heat exchanger, and then it will vent it out the top. Uh, I think I probably also need a piece of insulation on the top, but I don't really need a sheet of the ACM because you'll never see up there. So that's the first two panels fitted and that has actually worked really nicely. These um, the 3D printed panel mounts, this is probably the third or fourth iteration of them, seems to be working very nicely. Um, the key has ended up being the print orientation to try and make sure that they don't snap the hangs off when they go into the slot and don't split in half when you do the nut up but these ones that's 10 or 12 I've just put in and they've worked really well I haven't done the ones at the back yet because I'm not sure I can actually get an allen key behind that and if not I'll have to think of another way of attaching this back panel uh, but that's it for tonight it's a bit late so I need to um, go inside now well, I need to tidy up first so I've plugged it in just to see if it works and double check uh, we'll put some beers in just to absolutely make sure it really does get cold here you can see the fridge enclosure now has all the sides on it uh, I haven't got a top for it because I'm just going to use the insulation board I don't think it needs an extra piece of material it's just added weight um, so I'm just going to insulate put some PIR insulation in between in each of these sides and on the back because that's what it recommends to do in the manual and then um, I can put the fridge in and screw it into these rails I've already sorted the wiring out because I've had it in to test it to make sure it all works so that just plugs into the plug it's not the same connector but these spade connectors fit perfectly into the plug on the fridge itself so to mount these in place I'm not just going for a friction fit, which should do the job. I'm also just using a bit, of, a bit of leftover contact adhesive just in the middle of the panel, in the middle of this, just to help make sure it sticks to it. Um, that has the added bonus of acting as a um, damper, so that hardly makes any noise now. I don't know if you can tell, that rings more. Once I've got the insulation on them, they're damped right down. Here we have the finished fridge enclosure. Now I just need to get the fridge in place and screw it into the frame. You'll probably see there's a clear hose here. That's off the drip tray in the back of the fridge. So that'll just feed out and it'll either join the drain going into the waste tank or even I'll just put a hole in the floor straight out the bottom. So that's the fridge now 
put into place and screwed. Sorry, I didn't film it, but I'm on my own and it's I can't really film and do it at the same time. There are four screws. I've just put the caps on these two there and there. Oops. There and there. And in this case, I have just got self-tapping screws that have gone through the fridge and then into some pilot holes in the frame. You can just see there's a screw head there and a screw head there. And I'm um, planning to get some sort of a, a cover to clip in there to cover all that. So we're on a bit of a push at the minute. We need to get the van at least functional for going away in a, a month's time or so. So the big focus is on the kitchen area and the first bit of that to get sorted is the fridge. So the next step now that we've got the fridge in is we need to get the hob and the sink in and to do that we need a worktop. We've had this kind of cardboard cutout mock-up for a little while now and I need to turn this template into a plywood template before finally tracing that out of the um, actual material. The reason being is the lightweight laminated ply we're using for the top of this is very expensive and since we've got spare plywood it's worth using that to make a template um, to get it absolutely right before we use the proper stuff. So after a bit of work I've got my plywood template made and I know where I need to modify it. I need this edge to be a little further out. Same here and then I can add a small rad to that corner. It's a pretty good fit around here although I think this corner will want a rad. Uh, I'm going to have a strip, a little upstand along the back there just to stop things falling off the surface and down the back. And then here is the hob and sink. So this is the Dometic, I think it's 9722, it's the slightly smaller one but it has a deeper sink which appeals to us. Uh, the downside is that it doesn't come with any template of its own so you have to make your own template from it. So let me just take it out and I'll show you what that looks like. Hopefully this is clear. So we've got like a main opening and then you have to route a 5mm slot here that the sink will sit into and that way the screws have got something to go and bite down into. I suspect I'll also need to add a strip to the back of it, to the bottom of it, for, to be able to use a slightly longer screw. But that's all alright. Um, also I need to work out how to attach the worktop from the underside. So I think the next step is to use the proper material. Okay, so here's the uh, lightweight furniture ply. We got it from the nearest place I could find that stocked it because it's really difficult to get it to ship because it's so easy to damage. I suspect it's a Moreland product. So you can see it's got five core plies a thin outer ply and then it has the laminate surface which in this case is a gloss black. So I'm going to cut it off with the track saw and then trace out my pattern onto it, cut as many straight lines as I can with the track saw and then finish it off with the jigsaw and then cut the, ground, uh, the groove in with the router.
So here's the worktop in place. Uh, it looks scrappy because it's still got the plastic cover on it, but once that comes off it should look really tidy. Now that all fits nicely, I'm going to go and get the worktop, uh, the uh, hob and sink unit and make sure it fits, and if it doesn't, just make any trims or cuts that I need to. So to finish the worktop and the tables, we're going to use this um, T-trim. And to do that, you need to cut a groove exactly in the centre of the ply. To do that, I'm using this router with this router bit and bearing. And the combination of the two is a perfect fit for that T-trim. So it is a 2mm, 40mm diameter slotter and the sleeved bearing that goes onto that arbor is 26 millimeters OD that's the important dimension because the difference between the two 40 minus 26 gives you 14 which leaves you with a 7 mil groove so I've just done a little bit and you have to be careful to get it dead in the center so that was my little practice because this bit's not that visible. Now I'm going to go whiz around the rest of it. making sure I'm lined up and then just slowly working my way down tapping it in it actually needs several passes to seat fully and I'm just taking my time because if you hit it in one key you can damage the groove I've also made this little um, kickstand, same way I've made the countertop, the only difference is this has got a whole bunch of um, pocket holes on the back so I can then screw it to the worktop. Okay, so the little backstand, kickstand, whatever you want to call it, that's firmly attached. And I've now put this all in place. Uh, what I think I'm actually going to do to hold this down is to drill straight through the frame members. So I've uh, pre-drilled all the holes in the frame and then here I've just got a couple of little angle brackets uh, which I'm just using some nuts as spacers for. There's some holes in that one there, hole in that corner. We'll try that and hopefully that'll be enough. If not, I'll uh, add an extra one in here. So the worktop's all screwed down now, it's nice and solid, I've taken the plastic cover off. Now I'm going to put the hob in place, but first there's a little rubber strip that I need to just slip onto the edge all the way around. So the um, hob comes with these fastenings to go in, and there's eight spots around the ring, and these little kind of cups go in first then you put a screw in now the screws they supplied are far too long so I've, I've got my own good quality screws which you can't, see, can't really see which I'm then screwing down in all eight spots which look like that and then to finish it 
you get the rubber caps, press them into the top of the cups, and that should be it. And there we have it, worktop with a little kind of backstop and the sink, the double hob. Obviously, none of the plumbing's done, none of the gas yet, but it's all in place. So far, I'm very happy. So now that we've got this first worktop finished, I'm going to do the next two, which are actually table tops for the two lagoon tables. So for the, those of you who remember, we uh, made some cardboard templates for these tables when putting in the lagoon table legs, and I shall put a link up uh, here or here. I can't work it out. Anyway, uh, I've now remade them in plywood to double check again to make sure. Uh, and they're looking pretty good. I'm just going to tweak this one a little bit. I think I need to make it 30 millimeters longer that way. Just make it a little bit more comfortable for eating off. Then I'm going to transpose this onto the proper ply, cut all of that out. I'm going to use these as a template to route, uh, flush route the flush out this curve onto the pucker finish and then I'll put the groove in and the edging strip like I did on the worktop. So uh, I'm going to go start cutting the proper ply now. And sort out the edge. I then used the uh, templates I made and my router with a flush trim bit just to finish these edges. And now I need to put the groove in it using my router so that'll put the groove in there and I'll knock in the trim like I've done for the worktop. So the T trim's knocked on. The last step is to just put the base plate on and you need to make sure you take any plastic covering off first. And I actually used that to mark out this is kind of the local locating corner off it uh, so I'm just going to unscrew it from my template screw it into place take the plastic off and then it's all done so here you can see the tabletops done uh, they swivel around that gives us sensible eating distances there and similarly sensible eating distances there and then if you want to do some gaming for example swivel that one out the way a bit and that one sits in between all four so yeah, really happy with how they've worked out, and that is the work tops all done now. So originally we weren't going for gloss black for these work tops, we were going for there's some greyer ones that we like the look of, but we're really struggling to get hold of the material in time, and we're going to be we need to be using this van within the next five or six weeks. So it kind of got to a point where it's just well order one that we're okay with. So I think they're okay. They're going to be a fingerprint magnet, but so be it. Um, yeah, happy with what we've got so far. Thanks very much for watching again. Uh, please do usual comment, like, subscribe. Got any questions? Drop it in the comments below. Cheers.